Good morning, this is Herb Shiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And as we approach a long holiday weekend here in the United States, what better activity than to do a bit of algebra? No, I'm kidding. You don't have to do any algebra. I did a little algebra for you, but in fact, most of you won't have to do any algebra at all because current generations of slicers provide you all the information you need to determine if this reel has enough filament left for that print that you want to make if you buy one $10 to $15 tool. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. One of the challenges of 3D printing as you get to the end of a reel is it's really hard to tell how much filament is on that reel. Now originally slicers reported the amount of filament you needed in meters and that's even harder to determine. How many meters are left on here? Today, most slicers will see report both meters and kilograms. So all we really need to do to get started is to determine how many kilograms of filament are left on this reel. Now I guess we could take all this filament off and weigh it. There's clearly a better way. Let's do that together. To begin with, you need an inexpensive scale. It has to be big enough so that you can weigh a reel of filament so it'll sit on it. Um, so a small postage scale won't work. Uh, this is an Amazon basic scale. It sells for, it was on sale for $10.31. So my guess is you usually can get a scale like this for under $15. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the scale and let it reset to zero and then take a full reel of filament. So this is one of my secrets. I weigh every reel of filament when I first receive it. So this filament is 1,250 grams, 1,250 grams. Now, I know I purchased a kilogram of filament. What does that tell us? Well, the reel is 250 grams. Easy. I write that on the side of the reel. In fact, 250 grams is pretty standard. Many of the reels of filament you get, the reels will be about 250 grams. So if you don't know, because you didn't weigh your reels in advance, that's a good starting point. Now I'm going to weigh the reel of filament that has the filament I want to use for my print. And that comes to 422 grams. So if I subtract 250 for an empty reel, I know that I have 172 grams of filament on this reel. Easy. So go out and buy yourself a $10 scale. Now, what do I do with that? Well, look, let's look at the screen together and we can see where to find that information in various slicers. So I'm going to start with the new Prusa slicer, which was Slick 3R Prusa Edition in version two, they've renamed it. If you look at this page in the lower right-hand corner under sliced information, you'll see that it's going to use 62 meters of filament and that weighs 185 grams. So this particular print this happens to be a Game of Thrones dragon egg. We cannot print a Game of Thrones dragon egg with this amount of filament. This is Cura version four. Earlier versions of Cura only provided the number of meters of filament. But in this version on the lower right hand corner, you can see both meters and kilograms. Now, why is this different from the previous example? Because we have a different layer height. Depending on the layer height, the number of layers you're going to print, the width of your individual layers, the fill factor that you set on your object, you'll need different amounts of filament. Because you're not printing a solid object, you're printing outer shells and an object that has a fill pattern inside. Now that's great, but how does the Prusa slicer or Cura determine 
how much this weighs? Well, it needs to know density. So let's look at where you set up density in your slicer. In the case of the Prusa slicer, or Slick 3R, you'll find density on the filament setting page. And I've circled it here. So this is where you specify the diameter of the filament and its density. How much it weighs for a cubic centimeter of filament. Now we have the exact same type of setting in Cura. Here in Cura, we see it on the preference page. You'll see here that we have density, diameter, and you can even put in price so that Cura will tell you how much this object is going to cost to print. Now both Prusa, Slicer, and Cura have many filaments already loaded. In general, you'll find that the same type of filament, PLA, PETG, nylon, is similar across manufacturers. It's not identical, but it's similar. So if you don't have your filament in your slicer, and you want to be precise, how do you find what the exact density is of your filament? Well, you go to the manufacturer's webpage. Let's look at two examples. One easy, one hard. In this case, on the ColorFab website, you'll see down here on the bottom of the page, it lists the tolerance, the density of this particular filament. And this is their basic PLA filament. So that's very, very easy. You go to the web page, you click on, in this case, it was under specifications. But what if it's not listed under specifications? Well, there's a trick. And the trick is that any product shipped to, in general, the US, Europe, has to have a material safety data sheet. And on the material safety data sheet, you can find detailed information about the filament. This happens to be a Hatchbox PLA, and you'll see here it happens to be 1.27 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, what if your slicer doesn't report grams. It only reports length. Well, here's where the algebra comes in, and you can sort of zone out. Maybe you did that in high school also. So sort of zone out, but I'll give you an idea. Filament is a cylinder. We know from basic geometry class how you calculate the area of a cylinder. So if we know the length that we're looking for, we know the diameter of the filament. We can calculate the area. If we know the weight for a slice going through that cylinder, we can calculate the overall weight. And so this is the formula simplified. It's simplified because uh, different parameters have different units of measure, but you don't have to use this algebraic equation, where you multiply density times length times pi times diameter squared, and you divide by four. Instead, if you just go to the Dr. Vax website and you click on calculated 3D printed filament, you will see a calculator. So if you have the number of meters of filament you need, you select the filament type or a type that's close, and it will tell you the weight. So you can see it's really very easy to determine, and it's a really good idea to determine before you start a print, whether there's enough filament on this reel to complete the fit print. Nobody likes to run out of filament in the middle of a print. Well, folks, I hope this was helpful. This is a very simple concept, and sometimes the simplest concepts are things we don't think to do. If it was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, Recommend it to your friends.